A long, long time ago, there was a man who was a standout. He wasn't any sort of superstar, no big-time celebrity. He wasn't really a big fella. He had some neighbors who were big men in the community, figuratively and literally. They were huge specimens, the kind of people others naturally are drawn to. People who had lots of friends and a vibrant social life. Big men with broad shoulders and broad smiles. Heroes and well-known. They had it all together, so they thought. And then there was this other guy. Not a standout, just a regular, and not real attractive to the people around him. Not a standout in a crowd. Average, homely, pretty much invisible. Yet God looked down from heaven as he is prone to do and saw them all for who they really were. He saw the wickedness of their lives, the evil of these big men and their wives and children. He knew that every aspect of their lives was evil. The only thing they could think was, was wrong. The only thing they could do was evil. And God was grieved. What moves the heart of God to sadness? It's people who pe behave badly. People who do wrong and don't feel any wrong about it. People who are evil and don't care. All people are wicked. The prophet is clear on that. The heart of man is desperately wicked. But God also is clear that he is looking for people who will acknowledge their wickedness and trust his son to forgive their wickedness. So God looked down and saw them for who they really were. Heroes in people's eyes. Yet God saw them as evildoers who did not care. In fact, God saw how bad it had become, and he decided that something had to be done. Now, in the middle of it all was a man, the other guy I mentioned earlier, not a standout, not a big man figuratively or literally. Instead, ordinary, in many aspects, invisible. The Lord used some pretty impressive language to describe this invisible sort of guy. He found favor in the eyes of the Lord. He was righteous, blameless. He walked with God. He was a man of faith. He had a vibrant faith in God. And so when God told him, build an ark and here's how you build it, he built an ark. When God told him, gather up the animals in pairs, and gather up the birds in pairs, and gather up some extra of the clean animals which you can eat, he did it. He gathered up the animals, put them on the ark, and waited for the rain to come. And it came. Forty days and forty nights straight. And the only people that made it were the eight human beings on the ark, save by what sometimes has been called Noah's floating zoo. By the account given, 375 days uh, passed from the entrance to the exit of the ark, and through it all, the Lord saved. So what is a righteous person supposed to do? First, you let the wild animals and the birds go. Then you herd up the livestock, and then you worship God in the most fitting way you know how with the most valuable possession that you have. They had a burnt offering of the edible, of the clean animals, and of the clean birds. And the Lord in heaven smelled the pleasing aroma of the sacrifices. It was not actual smoke reaching the nostrils of God. It was their action that was reaching up to God and giving him pleasure. They were reaching out to him in faith and sending up a thank offering of their lives showing God that they were thankful to him for sparing them. They also put themselves on the line. They took some of the very best food out of their meagerly furnished cupboards, and they burnt it in order to symbolically give it to the Lord. They took a degree of trust because that, that required that they trust the Lord to provide them with more food on this post-flood barren land. There wasn't anything left, just what they were able to preserve on the ark. And they were moved in their hearts to worship their Lord by burning up some of the precious little good food that they had. 
our lives are meant to rise up to the Lord as a pleasing aroma as well. He loves the smell of a life lived for him. Kenda Chrissy Dean, who is a youth ministry professor, has said it this way. Your children are smart, and what your children see you giving a significant portion of yourself to and a sig significant portion of your money to, they will realize that that is something that is worth living for. We need to do that for Jesus. Now, there is no longer any need for ark builders because the Lord made his, his promise and he chose the rainbow as a reminder. When we see the rainbow in the sky, we should hear the words ringing in our ears, never again will I completely flood and completely wipe out. Yet the Lord still wants Noah's and he still wants to, to smell the certain, a certain pleasing aroma. The people are us, and the aroma is our life, that is a life that is completely dedicated to him. We read about that more in 2 Corinthians chapter 2, verses 14 to 17. The aroma, as described there, gets received in two completely different ways. To some, it is a stench. To others, it is a sweet perfume. It is the smell that our Heavenly Father wants. It's called the fragrance of the knowledge of Him. For some, it's the fragrance of death. It's an awful smell. To others, though, to those who are faithful in following Jesus Christ, it is the fragrance of life. And to God, we are the aroma of Christ. You are a fragrance that God loves when you put your trust in Jesus. Like Noah of old times, you are what God loves to smell. Your faith in him in all aspects of your life rises up to him like a sweet-smelling aroma. Commitment to Christ will bring division. Some will be repelled by us. In many respects, I'm glad that the Lord let us in on this because I think it keeps us from getting depressed. When there are people who do not like us simply because we are Christians and we take a stand for Christ, it helps us to gain reassurance with God that for those who are perishing, our commitment to the Lord will smell like a stench. Yet for those who are being saved, it is the aroma, the pleasing fragrance that God loves. Frank Honeycutt wrote a book a few years ago with an intriguing title, The Truth Shall Make You Odd, he titled it. I hope someday soon to read the book. The title backs up the truth we see in this scripture. Not everyone will naturally embrace the truth of Jesus Christ. To some people, we might smell funny, but to God, a faithful follower of his, we are a sweet-smelling aroma. We are the fragrance that God loves. May the Lord bless you and keep you and make his face shine upon you. May the Lord turn his face towards you and give you peace. God bless you.